Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm here with the amazing Sarah Kinley. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yes, I can see so many fantastic people. Budoval in the chat, helping us out, uh, throwing you guys so many useful links. Today is a very exciting day. We are going to be exploring Illustrator on the iPad with Sarah and doing some character design and some fun illustrations. Uh, first of all, before we talk a little bit more about Sarah and what she does, and we're very curious, Sarah, because we already see some beautiful artwork behind us. I want to say hello to these fantastic people in the chat. I can see Jack Watson, uh, Harry, Steve, ciao Steve, Sarah, me and Steve do a little Italian classes next to Adobe Live, <laughs> usually doing our stream. And also I can see Anthony, Paloma, um, and Radu, Ariana. Hey, thank you so much. Jotirmia is here as well. Alberto, what's up? Nice to see you. So many familiar faces and new people in the chat. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Claudi. I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK. And I'm here uh, hosting Sarah that is going to guide us through these two hours of fantastic uh, discovering how to draw and illustrate with Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. I know many of you were here waiting for these, waiting to see how does it look like. And finally, we can start to unveil some more information. And I'm really excited. But first of all, Sarah, can you tell us more about you? And I can see Rob. Zilla in the chat. So um, please right. let, know, let everyone know a little bit more about you. I have some link on my desktop while you introduce yourself that I can share uh, awesome. with your website, uh, which is superduper.com. And also we have uh, your Twitter which, and Instagram, which are both you are super duper. And all, of course, I know that you stream regularly on Behance, which is another place when people can see you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, if I remember well. That's uh, right. People, they can see your drawings. But now that we've seen your work, uh, we want to know more about you. Please All take right. the show and let us know. <laughs> cool. Thanks again so much for having me. Hey, everyone. It is awesome to be here. Uh, my name is Sarah Keenly, uh, known throughout the internet as you are super duper. Um, I am a, by day, I am a product designer. Uh, I've been working on digital products for the last 20 years, but by nights and weekends, my passion is illustration and character design. Uh, and that's what I am so excited to be here today uh, to share some of. Uh, I'm based in Mystic, Connecticut, which is a little vacation town in Southeastern Connecticut in the USA. Uh, but I'm originally from Toronto, Canada. So occasionally you may get a little bit of a Canadian accent coming through. That's amazing. That. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what we're going to be doing today? Sure. Yeah. So in thinking about uh, what would be really fun to work on in Illustrator on iPad, I thought to correspond with the release of iOS 14 and all of the exciting things that have been happening with home screen customization with widgets, um, but also custom icons. I thought it would be really fun today to make a whole bunch of custom icons uh, for your mobile device, whether that's uh, an iPhone or an Android. Um, we'll do them a, a little bit fun and character-based. Um, most of my character illustration is really simple, geometric forms. Um, so we'll base them on that same sort of style. Uh, and, and we'll see how many icons we can create to make my, uh, to make my iPhone beautiful. And, and all of you as well. Yeah. So uh, we'll also share the assets from uh, from this. So if anyone would like these icons, we'll post them at the end of our at the end of our session. That sounds exciting. And I was sorry to interrupt you, but I want I was wondering if you can take some input from the chat. Maybe we can ask um, everyone what their favorite app is, or if they have any anything that can inspire you to create something. What do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to create icons for your favorite apps. Um, I have certainly have some of my uh, my own favorites, but um, let's work on your favorites. That, that that would be fun. And maybe I'll discover some new apps that I that I don't know about. Sounds fantastic. Before jumping into your iPad, let's share with everyone the schedule because we have a fantastic day um, at here at Adobe Live. As we know, it's very busy. Started in the morning at 7.30 with design a responsive landing page uh, with Elise Todd, fo followed by Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with our amazing Budaval that is also in the chat and character design with Anthony Johns and 
Andrew O'Cradle had just finished the introduction to the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So tomorrow we will be reviewing your work. So make sure to stay tuned for the Daily Creative Challenges. And then we are here with Sarah for character design on uh, Illustrator on the iPad. And then third challenge of the day, make sure to stay tuned because after us, Peter Del Tondo is gonna present the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And to close the day, uh, Jordan, Ayot hosted by Andrew Ocarado in the wonderful design in the dark. So make sure to stay tuned because it's going to be a fun filled day at Adobe Live. And before we jump into Sarah's iPad and we start to see uh, how the artwork is going to develop for this app, I want to remind everyone to share your questions in the chat. I'm going to be here with my eyes uh, looking at the, the chat on behance.net slash live and I can pass any question related to illustration, character design, um, uh, or Illustrator on the iPad, or just simply Illustrator to Sarah. So she's gonna go ahead and keep working, but I can uh, keep my eyes on the chat for your question. And if you're watching us from YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live, because otherwise I cannot see your questions. So let us also know where are you from um, in the chat. As I said, I'm here in uh, Manchester. Sarah, you are? I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Mystic, Connecticut. Mystic, okay, <laughs> fantastic. So I think we can jump into your um, iPad and I'll be letting you know if there is any question. All right, great. Let's do this. So, uh, so we're looking at my iPad. I did a little bit of prep work um, before we got together today, um, just to lay out what, the, what a basic home screen would look like uh, on the iPhone. And what we can do is as we create these apps today, we can drop them into this uh, little phone mock-up so that we can see the icons as, as they unfold. Um, and so we're gonna do a lot of zooming in and out here um, on the iPad today. I've got a little template here to create uh, my icons. And yeah, I'm pretty much ready to get started. I guess I will, I'm gonna kick it off with one of my favorite apps uh, just because I've been dying to make an icon for it. Um, so I'm going to start off with a Twitter icon, mm -hmm. um, and I can talk a little bit as I go about um, the way that most of my character designs take shape. Um, you'll notice if you look at uh, a lot of my work that it's there's a lot of eyes, and pretty much every character starts out with with an eye. So I'm going to start out right there. That sounds fantastic. I'm looking in the chat to see if uh, everyone, anyone is uh, giving any app. Um, perhaps advice. So I can see Paloma say general text message apps, YouTube or Google Chrome. Google Chrome should be interesting as well. Oh yeah. Uh, with your style, it would be very interesting. And Jotirmia is already asking a question, not wasting a second here. Fantastic. Is asking Sarah, what is the size you work on for the icon? So the size that I'm working on for the icons is 120 by 120. Um, I think for both Android and iOS, you should have them be at least 60 pixels by 60 pixels. Um, on the iPad, they're a little bit larger, so I usually work um, larger. But as long as it's square, you can pretty much work at any size. Um, but for this, we're about 120 by 120. Fantastic. And we have uh, um, Steve saying before uh, that he can hear the Toronto accent already. Steve is yes. uh, from New Zealand. Wellington and let us know see what time is it out there because I believe it's early in the morning already I never usually Sarah when Steve is here with us in the chat is always uh, a, another day <laughs> so it's usually <laughs> the day after it's super cool um, Marta is saying Sarah is the best her passion is so contagious I completely oh, agree wow. I'm a fan Sarah if you want to take over the stream and I'm just here taking notes I'll be like super happy just looking at you working and getting your insights so I can see that you already started with that I yeah so pretty much all of my characters have at least one of of, of these eyes it's a really good way like if you're not sure if something is my work you'll see this eye that, that's me um and most of the time, especially when I'm just creating work for myself, um, I don't have a lot in my head before I start. I don't usually know what I'm doing. I just let the eye guide me. Um, in this case today, I do have a little bit more uh, <laughs> of an idea of what I'm doing. And so um, I'm going to use this eye to help start creating my uh, a little bird for my Twitter icon. 
Oh, wow. That's super cool. I wish all the app would kind of have a, a little bit more of artistic, um, you know, a perspective on it. Can you imagine if um, all these biggest company would let artists design and do, you know, like on, on Instagram, big accounts do like a passed on. So they leave some artists yeah. just to, to post for a day or something. It'd be nice to have at least like four times a year or just maybe for Christmas or for summer to have uh, the app that is updated to some uh, feature artists. That would be so cool. Oh, I love that idea. Maybe someone is watching and can take this idea at Twitter. Hey guys, we want to see Sarah's illustration in our phone. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make that happen. So Mallory Doric is asking you a question and she's asking, um, can you please show the way you sliced the eye? Um, that went really fast. Ooh, so Sarah, yes. we really want to see how you work. And I believe that this is an interface that is pretty new for everyone. So yeah. if you can uh, let us know a little bit more about the tools, where things are, that'll be fantastic. Cause I know Absolutely. everyone is very curious. All right. Yes, I did do that pretty fast. Um, <laughs> let me actually recreate that um, in the wrong layer here. I'm just going to lock this one. All right. So this is one of my favorite features in Illustrator on iPad. It is so cool. So um, if you are familiar with Illustrator on the desktop, then you're probably familiar with the Pathfinder tools. Let me turn the layers off here so we can really focus on it. Um, so with the Pathfinder, we can do things like combine shapes, we can subtract a shape from a shape, we can grab an intersection. So we have all those different those different tools. In Illustrator and iPad, it's, it's nice that when I open up this combined shapes menu, I actually get a preview of what would happen if I use those. But even though I'm really comfortable with those, there's this new feature called Shape Builder, and it's just awesome. And so it's the very first option in this menu. And so when I tap this, it turns on shape builder mode. And so I have those two circles selected and I just want the intersection of them. And so what I can do is just draw lines through the pieces that I don't want and it will just remove them. And then I'm left with uh, the shape uh, that I wanted. So you can use this for combining shapes as well. So if I was to make sure I'm again on the correct layer, uh, if I was wanting to combine a couple of shapes, let's say these two circles, I can select those and in the shape builder, I can draw a line between them and connect them instantly. And I'm left with, with that new shape. So it's just super cool, especially if, uh, if you create work by combining a lot of geometric shapes, which is something that I do, then the shape builder makes it just feel so natural to, to create more complex, uh, arrangements. So, so yes, amazing feature, um, top three favorite features. Uh, it's in the top three of my favorite features on Illustrator on iPad. I can see Widowal saying like, whoa, I think it's super cool. I mean, the idea to draw with the Illustrator on and, and with the pencil tool, I think, I mean, when I heard that that was coming, uh, I was super amazed. I've, I've drawn an entire uh, book, illustri illustration book uh, mm. on draw with the, with the draw app. Mm -hmm. And I like you imagine going from draw, to Photoshop, to Illustrator, to trying to straighten the line. I'll let you imagine how my path looked like <laughs> the amount of oh my anchor goodness. point. <laughs> I can only imagine. That sounds like uh, just a tremendous amount of work. <laughs> yes, I think like I ignored, like, you know, I, I kind of had to turn off my uh, analytical eye and just kind of, you know, ignore <laughs> the anchor point and just kind of whack everything in, in Photoshop so I could, you know, not see them <laughs> more than anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> transform into a painting. But finally, now we're going to be able to use pretty much everything. I mean, I had a go and Illustrator on the iPad during the um, wonderful Make It on Beta event that we both mm. uh, participated to. And it was so exciting what you can actually do. Um, Alberto is asking, can we install Illustrator for the iPad now or is it still in beta? Do you want to take this question or you want me to answer, sure. Sarah? Yeah, I'm happy to answer. So it is, it is still in beta. However, um, Illustrator uh, on the iPad is now available for pre-order in the App Store. If you pre-order it ahead of the launch date, you will get it before the general public does. So I highly recommend that if you've been waiting for this like I have, that you sign up for that pre-order. Uh, and, and then I believe the official release date is October the 21st. Uh, so it is fast approaching. Um, I'm going to actually take the day off work on that day because I'm so excited 
I have been dreaming of this app for so long and I need a day to celebrate. And also that day is going to be the first day of Adobe Max in which all the app will be the uh, the 2021 version of the amazing Creative Cloud will be released. So not only Illustrator on the iPad, but also we'll have Illustrator 2021, InDesign 2021, Photoshop 2021, and all the amazing speaker and Max uh, telling you more about these new releases and how to use the new features of the app. And I can already tell you that there is a lot of mind blowing things happening. I've just finished to record my um, InDesign uh, session. And uh, if you head on my Instagram, I am cloudy.com, you have a link tree and you can browse through the different sessions. Uh, but I already covered a few features of InDesign 2021 and it's pretty amazing what's happening now thanks to Ooh. adobe sensei uh the intelligent uh machine behind adobe products i think it's super exciting what's gonna happen it's gonna be fantastic to have a play with all these apps and of course illustrator on the ipad let us know in the chat how many of you are just waiting to try it and they're excited about it i'm super excited Oh, look at the little little bird coming together. <laughs> that looks so funny. Yeah, so he's cute. getting there. So Give cute. A little tail. So Sarah, do you start with a, a sketch or you just freehand and let the guy let the eye guide you? I know you are say that you're already uh, prepared for today, but yeah. do you uh, let, let us talk us through your uh, your work? Sure. So. Yeah, so normally, um, especially if I'm creating more than one character, um, I, I'll usually start with a sketch. And so I use Fresco um, as my sketchbook. Uh, I try to uh, use my iPad for as much as I can because I like to be mobile, um, especially now as we're all uh, quarantining at home, it's nice to be able to move around a little bit. So I will start off with a sketch. Um, I don't do a lot of color work or finished work in Fresco. Um, but I will uh, rough it out in pencil and then I can import it right into Illustrator uh, on iPad. So, um, so that's really nice because the workflow is so seamless. I can jump from one to the other. Um, but I usually, uh, I, will, I will get pretty detailed in those sketches and try to work out all of the shapes and pieces that I want to create my character. Um, and uh, maybe take a little more time on the sketches than I need to. Uh, but I really love the look of a pencil sketch in Fresco. <laughs> so I usually spend a lot of time there before moving into Illustrator. Um, but more recently, I've been trying to do a little bit more freeform work where I just jump into Illustrator and, and see what uh, see what comes up. Kind of like this bird is uh, is coming together today. That's fantastic. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and ask you if tomorrow you can perhaps bring us some sketches because I think that those are the little gems that um, an artist can share with the world because those are usually hidden. And I think that I usually say that Adobe Live is a safe space for everyone to learn. And I think that kind of breaking the barrier and reveal um, you know, perhaps the, the a little bit of a messy work or unprecise or unfinished, or maybe that it starts and it finishes in a complete in a completely different ways. I think that sharing a little bit of this background of the work in progress really uh, gives everyone the feeling that, you know, we're all the same. If we can do it, they just need to spend more time on the app in order to learn how to do it. And I think that is is great when uh, people like you that have such an amazing portfolio can can share the behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, I would love to do that. Um, I am a big believer in that. I, it makes me so happy to hear you say, uh, to hear you just talk about that because, you know, I am uh, I went to art school very early on in my career, but I've spent a lot of time jumping between engineering and design. Um, and I am not an illustrator by trade. That is not my day job. Uh, and so a lot of, of what I have done has really come from just practice and, and spending time uh, creating characters, experimenting with style. And uh, and so I'm very, very happy to share early, early work. It's a mess, but I, I think you're right. Like you can see uh, when you share those things, it really does break down those barriers. Um, and I'm just using simple shapes here. And I, I truly believe that anybody can uh, can do this. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll look forward to it. And I'm, I'm also not 
um, I come from a PR. Uh, so um, I used to be a speaker. I used to work at the, at the UN. So I had nothing to do with the, and this wonderful world of design. I was uh, uh, working as a uh, commu communication assistant uh, and PR at the UN by day. And by night, I was a graffiti artist. So kind of design saved Very my life because cool. uh, I was going to either get arrested or fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think like I want to see if you have any uh, photos of the graffiti. <laughs> yes, I'll bring it tomorrow. Um, today, oh, let's, let's stick maybe to your iPad. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit of desktop and maybe share uh, some feature with the document cloud that are coming. Uh, cool. But yeah, I promise that maybe when we start, I can share something or at the end of the day, if we have some time after the spotlight, artist spotlight, because um, I want to remind everyone to stay tuned because towards the um, perhaps 20 minutes before the end of the stream, we are going to bring one of you guys from the chat or from the Discord community under the spotlight in order to give you a shout and share your portfolio uh, with everyone. We are here to celebrate uh, everyone's work. So I think that that's exactly in the topic that we were in. And Sarah, I, I don't even define myself as a designer. I was super honored to be with you, with Rob Zillas, with so many other amazing illustrators and make it. I was like, well, I'm even here, <laughs> you know, like I never even studied design, like barely I've done a Shillington course. Um, so let us know in the chat if uh, some of you perhaps started uh, studying a discipline and then ended into the design or character design. Let us know. Um, your story guys because we want to know i mean it looks like the me and sarah had this uh this similar path where we went our own way despite <laughs> uh, despite our studies and everything so uh let us know what's what's your experience with the design world everyone is excited about the ipad by the way sarah here in the oh, chat good good we can uh maybe show some more of the yeah, favorite, talk us about the future, the features. features. Yes, please. Super yeah. Curious. So I think as someone who is has spent years and years using Illustrator on the desktop, one thing that made me really happy when I started working with um, the iPad version is that it's very similar. So if you feel good working on the desktop, you're going to feel great working on, um, on your iPad with Illustrator. Uh, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts carry over, which is wonderful. Um, and that means if you uh, have a keyboard, uh, so my iPad is actually uh, connected to my keyboard right now. So I can use a lot of those keyboard shortcuts to um, get things done a little bit faster. Um, so that's one thing that's really nice. Uh, the learning curve is, is a little bit lower. The pen tool was the big thing that, uh, that I had been dreaming of ever since the iPad and Apple Pencil came out. And uh, I'm happy to report that working with the pen tool is just as easy. Uh, if you're comfortable with it on the desktop, you're going to have a great time with it on um, on the iPad. There are some really nice little contextual menus that are built in. So right now I have this little blob selected and below it, there's a whole bunch of little icons. And these are all uh, shortcuts to doing things that normally we do on the desktop. So I can duplicate things, I can lock a layer, I can move a shape around, I can change its order within the layers. There's, so there's all sorts of things that you can do just really fast, um, but all with the benefit of the iPad. So zooming in and out is really fast and natural. Um, and then there are a few features, like I showed the shape builder that are still unique to the iPad that are that are super cool. And we might hold on my soup, my like absolute favorite feature until later on, um, because I think I'll get distracted by it because it's so much fun. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I witnessed your artwork before. So uh, I was catching up with Sarah behind the scene and I mentioned that I was in Berlin last year and I stumbled all her work. And now I'm super honored to be here hosting her because Sarah was uh, exhibiting one of her work at Pictoplasma in Berlin. Um, I believe it was May of last mm -hmm. year and uh it was fantastic so i think that if i think oh. about their artwork we're probably gonna share after i kind of like you know can have a, a little idea what feature you're talking about yes <laughs> so. it i i couldn't believe it when i got to use that um it has changed my workflow uh to be completely honest i and and really just saved me so much time 
Um, I would love if it was allowed, I would hug everybody on <laughs> the Illustrator for iPad team for making my life easier. All right, I'm gonna take this little Twitter icon and I'll just make a copy of it. While you make a copy, I just wanna give you um, a little idea of what we have in the chat, because I think that uh, a lot of people are aligned in our same background, starting by the amazing Budaval. So Budaval starting studying forensic anthropology and then she quit to do art. Go Mal! Nice. <laughs> and, then we have Jack Watson, which is a medical illustrator turned into animator, turned into UI and UX designer. And we have uh, Anissa, Anaissa, um, she's working on a neuroscience PhD and she had zero experience on design, but she fell in love with uh, the lives and she started to creating with Adobe. And Jotirmia also has a background in commerce and currently studying, uh, but he's starting to do the designing and he loves making illustrations. So many people there. Oh, I love it. And doesn't that, I think that speaks loud in, in terms of how accessible those apps are. Um, Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see. Oh my God, they're looking so cute. Oh, Everyone in one? the chat, yeah, let us know if you uh, want to give any suggestions or perhaps maybe uh, we can let the chat decide the background of next one or I don't know if you were yeah, planning that to do everything great. with the same color. Um, I'm just saying here, Sarah, you feel free yeah. to, to take over and redirect anything that I'm saying. Yeah, no, I <laughs> love that idea. Um, I think we heard earlier a chat icon. So maybe yes. I'll, I'll yes. work on the so little chat icon. The suggestion where well, um, either WhatsApp or a chat messenger or oh. Facebook messenger or Chrome. Those were the um, oh, suggestions right. that we Chrome. had so far. So um, if anyone has, had, has any other um, suggestions, let us know. We are here. I'm here monitoring the chat and I'm going to let Sarah know while she work. We also have Omar that is an architect turned into graphic designer and then illustrator. And Sabir was 16 and love making illustration. Fantastic. I think that uh, it's so amazing to see how many people uh, are literally changing their life with uh, the amazing Adobe apps. Absolutely. Oh, that's so, I, I love that so much. I, um, I find that, uh, that spending time um, creating illustrations, getting into character design, especially for me, has just been such a rewarding and almost therapeutic <laughs> experience. And I I love, I honestly love how, um, especially apps like Illustrator and iPad have really just pushed my work further and further, enabled me to explore in, uh, in ways that I never would have imagined. Um, but I love hearing that people have come from so many, uh, just from so many different experiences into art. Um, I think that's what makes art just so exciting to me is that we bring diverse opinions and ideas based on these backgrounds. It's it's amazing. Empowerment. And I see a lot of connection yes. with uh, with science as well. So a lot of uh, science uh, backgrounds connect with art. I think that they're very close together more than people think. Absolutely. So I did see a question go by in chat about artboards. Um, yes. So in... um, can you have multiple artboards in the iPad app? Yes. So this is a great thing. So let me zoom this out. So we have a big workspace, just like you do on the desktop. Uh, and so I actually have one artboard set up for my little phone. Uh, but if I wanted to create more, there's a, an artboard tool in the left menu. That I'm tapping on here. And there are a bunch of presets, uh, just like you'd see on the desktop. But you can also just select that and and create an artboard uh, and then change it to whatever size you'd like. So if you're used to working with artboards that fit your work style, then uh, you can have um, as many artboards as you would like. Uh, and those will all carry right over onto your desktop as well. So if I want to take this work and maybe um, uh, maybe I'm going to be stuck at my desk for a while because I need to binge watch something on Netflix, and so I'm going to be locked there, sitting there. I can go and work on Illustrator on the desktop and see these same things uh, right there. So the artboards are really flexible, and um, yeah, they just everything just works. It's it's fantastic. They've done an amazing job. I know they worked a lot that 
uh, Illustrator team has worked a lot to make these happen and to have it ready for Max, but um, I think it's mind blowing. And perhaps tomorrow, Sarah, we can show a little bit of a, a sync between the app and the desktop because that's Definitely. mind blowing. I think, I mean, when I tried seeing that literally what you do on the iPad, it's there on your desktop. It's, it's just mind blowing. I think it was super, super, super efficient way of working. Definitely. And yeah, so everything that you're working on by, by default is just saved in the cloud. Um, and it's saving every few, every few minutes, I think. And so you can always get that latest version. So if you go out and you forgot your iPad and you got access to your laptop, you can still get at, uh, get at that work. That would never happen to me though, because I go everywhere with my iPad. So <laughs> It's, That's it's, so, it's my everyday carry. What iPad do you have, Sarah? I have uh, an uh, iPad Pro. Uh, it's 12.9, the 12.9 inch one. So the larger of the two. And this is the 2020 model. Fantastic. They're looking so cool. I love the consistency of the eye. It's looking beautiful. And in the chat, I want to say thank you so much for this inspiring story, I think. Uh, Val was saying that it's amazing to see, or oh, Jotirmia was saying it's always inspiring to hear about someone who makes this transition and everyone is sharing love to Val. I agree, Val, it's amazing. I see before Alberto saying, Val, that was the best choice you make to quit in order to do art. Oh my goodness, We love yeah. you, Val. We love Val, you, Val. your work is incredible. I would never have guessed that that was your background. <laughs> it's like, you were, you were meant for art. I agree, she's awesome. I'm looking in the chat to see if any other question, any suggestion, any idea for the app, let your question coming. Um, I have a, I want to read someone else's story. Then we have Mariana. She started with graphic design, then went through art and became a librarian. And then now back into graphic design. Oh, that's, cool. That's fantastic. I love, I love the individual story and exactly what you were saying, Sarah, the fact that, you know, coming from different background, allow people to, really bring their own spin and their own voice. I think that the beauty of those app is that they empower you to communicate your story. Absolutely. Oh, an eye into a bubble. That's super cool. Yeah, we're going to get... So a lot of people would probably say that the faces uh, that I create, my characters are a little on the creepy side. Um, I think this chat... <laughs> Icon is going to prove to be just that, uh, but that's fine. We're going to go with it. Um, but I am going to also show uh, another feature um, of Illustrator and iPad that I love. Uh, this is number two in the top three <laughs> of, of favorite features that, that has just made my workflow so much better. So I have this eye and I want to make a copy of it. And normally I would just make a duplicate and then drag it into position. So wherever I, I want to place it. Um, and I use a lot of symmetry in my work. And so that was a common workflow. Um, with Illustrator on an iPad, there's a new feature. I'm gonna get rid of my layers again so we can see it nice and clear in this repeat menu. Um, and that's the mirror repeat. And so if I tap on mirror, I for the object that's selected, I instantly get a mirrored copy of it. And then I can do all sorts of cool things with it. So I can drag it into position uh, of where I would like it. Um, but I can also do other things. I can change the angle of it if Ooh. I want to. Um, you can overlap things. So if I wanted to bring these two shapes together and combine them, I can do that. Um, it's it's very, very intelligent. And so if you do any sort of work with symmetry, um, this is just fantastic. If I want to make edits to the one shape, I can do that and I'll see the mirrored copy of it. Um, That's a, such a time-saving feature. Totally. It is so great. Like I, it just makes me smile when I use it. It makes me so happy. Um, and it is just a massive, massive time saver. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's nice to see those changes. And these are the things, like I said, I'll get distracted by and just play with them. Um, make it so the last thing we need, Sarah, now is to make sure that they record in order to create animation. Cause I was actually loving the eyes moving. <laughs> the way that you're like rotating them. Yeah, like, yeah. exactly. Exactly. We need to we need to suggest some animation. So I'm gonna take care of a few questions in the chat or a few informations. 
So first of all, Melanie right. just say that she just walked in and she's like, wow, Illustrator is now on the iPad. She hasn't seen it yet. So Melanie, we're working in beta. Sarah is showing us uh, with her beautiful design, some of her favorite feature of Illustrator on the iPad. And Mudubal has just posted, and I'm sure she's gonna post it another time, the link in order to have a pre-order. And as, as Sarah uh, said before, if you do apply to the pre-order, meaning you download it right now, you click on that link that Mudubal is gonna place in the chat, you'll be able to have access before the public. The release to the public is gonna be on October 21st on the first day of Adobe Max. And also we have a question from Chris Olson says, saying, does the iPad have a pattern maker feature? A pattern maker feature? Uh, it does not yet. Um, I hope we get that feature, that would be amazing. Um, there are some uh, pattern-like features. So actually, while I'm this is this soon, this rectangle will soon be a nostril. Uh, but before it becomes a nostril, let's. Uh, I'm going to round <laughs> the bottom of it. Um, but uh, a couple of the things that you do have, um, and this is going to give away my number one favorite uh, Illustrator and iPad feature. But that's okay. We can get to it now. Um, <laughs> so I showed the mirror feature a minute ago. So there's also a grid. And so if I select grid, I can get a, a grid version of whatever object or collection of objects is selected. And I can really easily uh, make that, that grid as big as I want. I could put this inside of a, a, a clipping mask and, and put it inside of a shape. So you can create some things uh, that are like a pattern, but creating a tiling pattern, I think would be, uh, would be much harder. You'd need, you, I think we need a little bit more uh, in, in the app in order to do that. But again, just like the mirror tool, this is really flexible. So I can modify this grid once I've started working on it. Um, and so you can create patterns in that way, which is, which is really nice. Um, so that's another one of the repeat tools, uh, that is really awesome. And I'm going to use the bird to show the other because it's just too good. I was like, is it coming? Is it not coming? It's coming. We can't <laughs> avoid it anymore. We got to go, we got to get to it. Um, I'm going to, let's see, we'll get rid of this. All Hold right. The so got, here. <laughs> this is, this is going to make my day right now. All right. So I've got, I'm going to get rid of the layers. I don't want anything to distract me. So I've got this little bird. I'm going to select it. Uh, let's group it. So it's all one piece. And now this is my favorite feature. So you go into the repeat menu and now I'm going to choose the radial repeat. And so you click that and you get this radial pattern what? of your character. Uh, and it gets better than this. It is, and, and you can literally, like I said, you could play with this for hours. Um, I've heard that people, other people in the beta have played with this for hours, uh, but you, you have this little dragger on the side of your window um, right over here. Oops, don't need that eye. And when I drag that up and down, I can increase or decrease the number of copies of- That's so uh, cool. Oh my gosh. Object. Uh, you can also, there's a little rotation tool where I can change the angle of that, uh, of the object. Um, so already you can kind of see like, <gasps> Oh, what's happening there. <laughs> That's so um, cool. It's amazing. And then again, you can, you can still go in and edit, um, an object. So if I ch decided I wanted to change the color of this wing, I can do that and it'll apply it to the pattern. Um, you can also oops, last year, come back. All right, so you can also, if you didn't need a complete circle, uh, you can adjust how many uh, pieces are rotated. So maybe you just wanted a half circle. Uh, you can control uh, how much per circle you have. Uh, and then you can, of course, uh, you can uh, scale that. Uh, but something that's really neat that I only recently discovered, and let me make this a little smaller. Um, so I'm gonna drag this in real close. Let's reduce. Everyone is already super excited about this. And it it's, looks so amazing. Also, the does, Sarah, this bird looks like a, you know, the synchronized uh, swimmer, I think. Yes. So they were looking like the synchronized swimmer, which I think is the one of the most, you know, appealing choreography to see um, yes. um, an image moving together at the same time. And those birds are perfect for it. They look fantastic. So we need so we need an animation now of these birds moving yes. in time together. Uh, 
for and our synchronized. <laughs> yes. So what is really neat, and I've done this now in a couple of pieces that I've made uh, in the beta period, is I've got this one radial symmetry piece set up. Well, I can take that and I could make more. Um, and you can just kind of go whoa, nuts. Whoa, whoa. What happened with, there? With Sorry, can, can you just repeat it? Yeah. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> Absolutely. So we did it. We did that one time and we created yeah. our radial symmetry here. So now I've got this group. I put a star in the middle just to add a, a little bit of something else. Um, I've selected those. And again, I'm going to go in and choose the radial symmetry. And so oh, it's going to take gosh. that group and create um, a pattern. And so again, you can create these really complex and interesting designs. Um, a lot of times in my work, I'll create character-based mandalas. And in the past, that would have that would have been a case of me copying and rotating lots of pieces. Um, but now with the radial symmetry tool, uh, I can do it so much faster. And so I can't I can't complain anymore about how much time goes into creating yep. the mandala because now it's easy. Um, so I'll have to think of something else to complain That's about. That's gonna be super addictive though. I mean, you can really get in, you know, month fractals like i mean absolutely you can just there's so much you can do um and, Those and you can really so just get lost well. just moving you were things saying, around you were saying creepy before and i read Vudubal saying you underestimate the amount of creepy in each single one of us we love it <laughs> <laughs> and i completely agree <laughs> oh i love that i love it good. That's is what, saying, yeah that makes it interesting oh absolutely and uh, Vudubal is saying a bird universe and yes. Melanie, Melanie said kaleidoscope. Exactly. That's what it looks like. Yeah. 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 And so you can, you know, layer those one on top of another. So what I'll usually do when I'm creating mandalas is create rings for each character and just have lots and lots of radial symmetry uh, objects in my piece. And the only thing you have to remember with these features is that because they're not yet on uh, on the desktop, um, right now, this is an editable, editable object within um, within Illustrator. If I wanted to do some work on it uh, on Illustrator on the desktop, then what I'd want to do first is just to expand it and turn that off. So it would no longer be editable um, uh, within the app. So mm -hmm. I might make a copy of the file if I was going to do that, but this would allow me to manipulate it in uh, Illustrator on the desktop. But hopefully we'll end up getting those those features on the desktop as well. I'm sure um, they're coming. So you will keep a copy of the radial that it can keep rotate and then another, which is expand outline yes. that you can then uh, use in, in, a, in the desktop. Everyone exactly. is saying, wow, I can wait. I'm so excited. Biola, hi, nice to see you, Biola, in the chat. And she's saying, nice. Uh, Senna is saying, this is incredible. Chris is saying, cool, love the radial repeat feature. I know that that was going to be an awesome feature to show. Everyone is excited. Uh, this repeat feature needs to make uh, its way into the desktop version, says John. I completely <laughs> agree. Absolutely. Um, Paloma say, yes, a bird galaxy. <laughs> I like the idea of a bird galaxy. That sounds that sounds pretty Super good to me. Super cool. We can perhaps have like different uh, colors, different layers of colors of birds just kind of building up together. Oh, abs that's a great idea. Super this is cool. nice. I'm getting I'm getting new project ideas. <laughs> Taking notes on the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And yes, also Budaval was reminding that in about an hour, I think a little bit less now, um, I think 45, in 45 minutes, we will have the artist spotlight. So we're going to open someone's Behance profile in order to showcase it and just simply give you guys a shout because we're here to celebrate everyone's work. Oh, I love those nostrils. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, another another signature. <laughs> Yeah. Super cool. All right, Looking so I'm going to use that great shape builder feature again, just to trim the top of this nose and get rid of that little piece there. Oh, the bird is the world. Wasn't that P Peter Griffin? Uh, Voodoo Val is saying the bird is the world. I think that that was uh, a theme. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and watch the episode after we finish. <laughs> oh, such a good idea. Bird is the world. Oh, that's so funny. Everyone say, oh, no, Val, that's now stuck in my head, says Ariana. <laughs> 
Adriana is asking. So this is just a better version of illustration of Illustrator. Correct. Sarah, do you want to tell us again what we need to do in order to have access to uh, the final one that is going to come up soon? Absolutely. So yes, so this is the beta version of Illustrator on iPad and uh, the official release date has finally come out, which is very exciting. It's uh, it will be available to the public on October the 21st, uh, shortly before my birthday. Um, I was hoping it would be released on my birthday because that would which be even better. When? Which is when? Uh, October the 30th. Okay. So I don't want to delay the release by any means, <laughs> but I had my fingers crossed for a while. Um, so October the 21st, it will be available to the public. However, it is available in the App Store now for pre-order. And if you pre-order it, you will actually get, be able to download it ahead of time. So it will come out a little bit earlier for you. I don't know how early, but you'll get it before it goes live to everybody uh, in the world. So definitely get that pre-order so that you can, uh, you can enjoy Illustrator and on iPad as soon as you can. And also I can see that Voodooval has once again put the link in the chat. So if you want to go ahead and click there, you'll be able to pre-order Illustrator on the iPad, which will be revealed before everyone else to you because you got the pre-order while you were watching this live. So go ahead, check it out. Make sure that you get your pre-order in order to be able to play with this feature and maybe create a piece ahead of everyone else, which is always super cool. And also Mallory is asking, wait, when is Adobe Max? And yes, it's October 20 to 23rd, I believe. She's saying 20 to 22nd. I believe it's 20 to 23rd. Um, if you head on my Instagram, I am Cloudy, at I am Cloudy, you'll be able, you have a, a link there in the link tree uh, that is all about Adobe Max, or you can head on max.adobe.com in order to get all the information and uh, get all the different schedules and get all the goodness that is going to come for this amazing Adobe Max, because this year, Max is free for everyone, which I think is Ooh. mind blowing. I don't even know how many speakers, but I've seen that recently there are more singers, actress. Uh, I think the Gwyneth Paltrow was there as well. Um, oh my goodness. Yes, I was, um, oh my gosh, the, the actor that's done The Matrix. Keanu Reeves is there. Keanu Reeves. Uh, it's gonna be huge. I mean, definitely. And of course, I mean, you got speaker like me. I'm not as big as <laughs> Keanu Reeves or uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, but I can have some fun with uh, some new feature because also besides the Illustrator on the iPad, InDesign 2021, Illustrator 21, and the entire Creative Cloud will be released. And Budaval is there sharing uh, also the max.adobe.com link. So you can have a look awesome. at the wonderful things planned for everyone there. I'm loving the colors here. Yeah, oh, I'm glad. I want to replace my WhatsApp now. <laughs> that's that's so much better. Budaval is saying Nick Offerman is going to be there as well. Whoop. Rob Zilla is the speaker and we have him in the chat. Go and check Rob Zilla hard workout. He does amazing illustrations. I gave him a shout the other day when I was uh, doing an Adobe live stream and please go ahead and check his portfolio because he does some super cool, oh super my goodness. cool illustrations. Yeah, I'm a big Robzilla fan. We all are, I think, if we are in this space. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do a couple more things with this one. Mallory is saying the best thing to come out of a global pandemic is giving people the chance to attend events like this where it wouldn't be possible before. Yes, I love this attitude. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. Um, in fact, you mentioned Pictoplasma earlier and Pictoplasma is, is a character uh, festival and conference that, um, that normally would be held in Berlin. And this year, because of the pandemic, they had to hold it online for the first time. And that was wonderful because so many more people were able to get access to uh, just that wonderful community uh, and get a little dose of, of character design in their and world. I, I think there were like something crazy, almost like 70,000 views of the content. Yeah. Super cool. Melanie right. say exactly, who isn't a Robzilla fan? Exactly. 
<laughs> Sarah, I'm loving these. I'm not like, I'm not going to look at, look at my WhatsApp chat at the same ever again. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. So I got a chat app. Now I think it might be time to, I'm going to make that a little smaller actually, um, to think about what the Chrome app could look like. Yes. Well, before, uh, when you were doing the, the bird and, and I think it was the beginning of the chat, I thought it was going to be an egg. So it was like a, <laughs> <laughs> like a bird related, related sort of theme. But also, Sarah, can, can you show us the, this little chat with the rotation as well? Because having this little stick out from the chat, I think it can make it perhaps interesting as well with the rotation. Sorry, yeah, I'm uh, super... I'm like a... The, I'm like a uh... I'm oh. like a fan asking questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did they, so you want a radial symmetry? Please. Yes. Oh my goodness. You, you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. So yeah, we've got our little chat app. Let's, I'm going to just get rid of those birds. All right. Around. Okay. So again, this is my number one in my top three of favorite features of Illustrator and iPad, and that's radial symmetry. So it's available in the repeat menu, uh, first option in that menu. And so you got something, it's kind of cool. Um, and sometimes, so the overlap is pretty interesting, but sometimes I'll realize once I've done the initial uh, setup that I want to change it a little bit. I don't, maybe I don't want so much overlap. Um, and so what I can do is just actually drag an individual shape around. Um, and that looks kind of cool. I like that. That's so cool. Um, but I could also come in and maybe I want the, the points to all come together so I can rotate them that way. Um, I'm here with my mouth open. I just saw myself in the, in the screen that I'm there with my mouth open literally <laughs> looking at the work. It really is so just, cool. just fun. Um, it's, it's, it's funny because it allows, uh, it enables so much interesting work, but it is also just a fun, uh, a fun tool to play with. And um, that's probably why this is good that this is not my day job because I would, I would just be doing this all day and not accomplishing anything. Um, and also yeah. imagine in terms of uh, being a, um, a step for animation, because my head keeps going, you know, seeing your artwork moving is very exciting. Um, and, you know, you can create a lot of mid stop for an animation very easily because it moves pretty much seamlessly by yeah. itself with a rotation. So you can just create a little midpoint and then you can also animate pretty easily, maybe in Photoshop or in Premiere. Absolutely. Yes. I think, you know, if you were... Um, if you were thinking about animating uh, a mandala, and I've thought about that, I would like to do that with one of mine. Um, the This is a great way to work out before you actually get into Premiere or After Effects, what that animation might actually feel like. Um, you could you could even record your screen and, and kind of save a little note of, of what that uh, animation looked like, so. Oh, is that available to record the screen? That's just a, an iPad uh, feature. Um, mm -hmm. So I would just use that. That's a, this little record here. Um, but that would allow you to save it as a little video that you could refer back to if you wanted a reference of how something might move. Um, but yeah. That's super cool. This is... I'm seeing if there is any question in the chat. It looks like everyone is simply excited. And Vuduval is saying regarding Chrome, what about a Chrome lollipop or a Frisbee? And uh, Beck Nelson is saying, hi, everyone watching from New Zealand. Absolutely love the idea of creating custom app icons for the new iOS update. We'll have to give, it, give this a go. Yes, and I believe that Sarah mentioned that she was going to um, share some assets. So um, yes. if you let us know more about that, I think people are excited to give it a go in Illustrator already. Definitely. So I will make this available uh on my Behance page. I don't know if there's a way to connect it to this. Um, so Vudoval, if you if you have a, oh, to the screen, um, uh, Vudoval will be able to share a link. So Great. if you if you just then share a link or you let us know which, which project you can share it to, then Val can place your link. And again, um, I just wanted to mention that Sarah's Behance profile, which is a must-see, is you are super duper, and uh, Vudoval can perhaps share that 
now as well and people can have an idea of the amazing work that you do and uh, also the how the rotation is um is so fundamental for your work and the mirroring so mm. how many of these uh or if any of these artworks that you have on behance are created on the ipad uh the more recent ones are um mm. i just posted a new one yesterday uh which are some you Other are covers. super duper style album covers uh which i've been doing on my stream um and actually i'll be back on my stream tonight working on some more album covers um so that's all illustrator on ipad um uh there's a i think there's also an adventure time fan art piece that is um that is now on my behance and that was that's a mandala that was created um uh on the ipad is the one but i would the imagine Scorpius? that more and more will be so i'm sorry i cut you off no it's the one with the heart and the scorpius the one that is featured oh, as well that is also yes that is also uh from the ipad super cool oh we're doing a chrome lollipop yeah we're gonna try the i love the lollipop idea so i'm just looking to get a reference of the uh of a chrome logo oops Shikar is asking what's the countdown about so in about 33 minutes and that's super useful useful thank you so much Jacob behind the scene here helping us with the stream as placed the artist spotlight countdown that means that in about 33 minutes we'll jump off our amazing magic uh, iPad screen and we're gonna share uh, one portfolio so one of you from the audience, amazing uh, people here or Discord is being selected to uh, be featured for today Spotlight. So it's just a wonderful space to share your work and uh, to give you a shout to show everyone else what you do, which each single one of us do. Because uh, as we were saying before, each one of us is a different way of expressing themselves. And I know that today, today artist has some passions and I can definitely see, I can already um, give you a little bit of a hint. Um, a lot of the passions that are in, in the life of the artist are also reflect in the portfolio, which I think that is super, super cool. And Voodooval is also uh, very rightfully pointing to the tab above the chat. So if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live in order to participate and, and post your portfolio, your behance portfolio on the artist spotlight. So we have a tab on top of the chat on behance.net slash live. And if you uh, click on the tab, you'll be able to share your portfolio for review. And I believe that that happens every Monday now. So it's a new thing here. And Sarah, I'm going to say, take a, a moment to talk about um, a, another new thing that is coming up. Uh, me and Asus Ramirez will start from next week on the 7th of October with a new show called Rework It. And during the show, we are going to be reworking your work. So if you head to my website, I am Clady, you can find a form where you can submit your work. And perhaps if you have anything that you want to discuss, or if you just want to show off, that's absolutely fine. Or maybe if you're having uh, some issues to, you want to create a better composite, or you have some questions, something to discuss. Me and Asus are there working with Dimension, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Um, I think Asus is doing a little bit of video. I'm not sure if at the beginning, but definitely starting with images you can submit your work and we're basically talking about your work the entire stream we don't know if we're going to do one or two at a time we'll see how it goes but our better is like where 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 is this show so we're starting on the 7th of october head to iamclady.com perhaps towards the end of the stream when we jump after the after the artist spotlight i'll show you how to apply so you can be your artwork can be featured in the stream but sarah enough of this blob i can see that that's looking fantastic i was like where is the eye and here it is gotta get that eye in there it's always gotta have a home <laughs> it looks so great sarah we're gonna apply to google and just tell them sorry <laughs> i think you need to take this in consideration <laughs> so cool i'm gonna try one other idea though There is always room for the eye. I love the way that it, you always, always uh, find room for it. Yeah, it's, I just, um, 
even as my that I think I like a little better, um, even as my style has been evolving, and I think all of our styles are ever evolving. Um, eyes have always been a really big, uh, important part of uh, of my work, and I think actually, if you look at a lot of artists throughout history, um, uh, for many of them, eyes are this very important central uh, component to their pieces. Um, I think certainly from uh, from my art history days. My, um, I've been pretty heavily influenced by Picasso and uh, eyes for him definitely oh. changed throughout his artistic career. But I think closer to the end of his life, if you look at some of his paintings, um, those have really bright, big, wide eyes. And, um, and I think that's, that's something that has definitely come through in, in my work as well. Absolutely, I can see that now. Uh, I definitely can see, uh... Picasso work, um, what is called the black and white Guernica, Guernica, Guernica piece. Yeah. yeah, Guernica. Yeah, absolutely. I can see it now. I think it's always been there, the reference uh, with your work. But now that you you kind of make it come through, it's almost like Picasso coming through your work. Beautiful. Yeah, I um, I really love. I think one of the things that I am thankful for from uh, from studying art earlier in in life. Uh, was that I did, um, I did have a chance to study art history and, and learn a little bit more about the lives and, and processes of, of different artists. And uh, it's, it's fun to see how those, how those things can influence you. Uh, Keith Haring is another one who has been a big inspiration for my, for my work. And we are going to have, we have some brush, I believe, with Keith Haring. Before, before we move to that topic, I just wanted to share something very sweet. Here in the chat, we have Paloma Dora that says, my mom loves Picasso. Is this why my name is Paloma? That's super, oh, super sweet. Oh, I love that. Super cool. That's great, Paloma. And Chris is saying, awesome. Love that Chrome icon. Um, Jatumia is asking a question, what kind of design can be for the rework session? Jatumia, anything, anything that you created with Adobe apps. So it could be an illustration, it could be um, a piece of print artwork, a flyer, anything that you want to discuss with me and Asus, or maybe you want to see, um, you, you're probably struggling to take it to uh, the, the, the maximum potential and you want to see what happens if me and Asus practice a little bit more on it. It can be just a way of inspire everyone else also to uh, work and stretch their work a little further or you know maybe you think that we messed it up and you, and you are even more convinced that the way that you did it was the right way <laughs> you know there that's, you go. that never happens to you Sarah they're like people give oh you advice goodness. and you're like uh thank you for making me feel like I was done it right the first time <laughs> hey however you get to that finished piece <laughs> yes it works oh this is looking so cool so do we have a last app? Yeah, we, have we have about another... 27 minutes. So let us know in the chat. We have room for at least one or maybe two app icons. So let us know if you have any special requests. Sarah is here creating these amazing looking apps. So far we have a new version of Twitter, a new version of WhatsApp, a new version of Google Chrome. Which is your favorite so far, Sarah? I'm liking the Chrome icon. So cool. I think it's so iconic. Yeah. So if we don't if we don't have another suggestion yet, I think I'm going to make one for Instagram. Yeah, please. Let's see how quickly I can do. I can do this one. We have 26 minutes, but then um, if let's see, I think that there are just um, let's let's see how we do with the with the artist. Uh, spotlight. Maybe we have a little bit of time at the end to spot to to jump back in. Um, if you if you think of anything else that you want to show, but we also have Great. tomorrow. So now that you know what's going on during this stream with the Illustrator on the iPad, make sure to note your questions. And if perhaps does it happen to you, Sarah, that after something finishes, it's like, oh, why the questions come now? Just at the end. <laughs> oh, every time. Story of my life. <laughs> yes, same here. So if you have any question that maybe uh, think just at the end of the stream, we're going to be here tomorrow as well. So make sure to note them down so you can ask Sarah and you can learn more about this new amazing illustrator on the iPad uh, for now beta, but which is coming very soon. 
And of course, as we said before, you can get the pre-order right now in order to have it before the general public. Oh, we're getting a camera here. Yeah. And I think the lens will be the mouth for our oh, character. Oh, super cool. I love that you can do the rounded corner as well. Can you tell us how you do that, please? Yeah, in a, definitely. On the iPad? Um, yeah, so rounded corners. Um, let me pull it back here. So when you first create your shape and you're in, uh, you've just got the select tool, you'll see the little circle icon like you would in uh, Illustrator on the desktop. Oh, zooming in does not, doesn't help. Um, <laughs> but there's the little blue icon there. And so I can pull that to, uh, to create those rounded corners. Um, you can also, if you manually want to set those, you can open up the properties panel, which is over second button from the top on the right, and you can manually uh, enter in a value for that corner. Um, but like I just did, if you wanted to uh, only round one of the corners, or in my case, two of the corners, you can use your direct select uh, tool to select those points. And then again, just drag them uh, as you as you like them. So cool. So easy. I mean, really I can is. just imagine my life now on the couch, like <laughs> instead of working. So from the office to the desk, to the kitchen table, to the couch. This exactly. is my workflow now. <laughs> exactly. My, I think my favorite thing has been to be able to go, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a backyard that I can go into. And so taking that out into the backyard and being able to sit, just sit and get some fresh air uh, is, it's very nice. It's something I have learned to not take for granted in these times. Absolutely. Yes. And very inspiring to be outside, I think, as well. Oh, absolutely. Great source of inspiration is just being outdoors and just seeing what's seeing what's going on. Our so we have just some trying to control my dog barking at <laughs> chipmunks. <laughs> That's so funny. We have some um request for slack or discord Ooh. as well facebook oh, oh yeah very facebook good is, okay we're forgetting about facebook lately but yeah if we have time at the end or maybe if you finish uh instagram we have a, your choice between facebook pinterest as well pinterest facebook slack or discord oh Let's these are we, also good yeah so if someone else puts um if you guys vote for any of those maybe we can squeeze it in let us know. At the moment, we just have one each. Uh, so they're kind of, or maybe we had two. Yeah, Instagram was the one who had more votes, but is already in the making. Sarah, I love the fact that you don't stick to the shape of the app, but you completely take it by your own um, inspiration. So I love that the camera is, you know, a rectangular camera, not like a square camera, like the yeah. actual. Super yeah, I, I was. I was a little sad when their logo changed uh, for Instagram. I kind of mm -hmm. wanted the um, I wanted the camera back, and so that's one of the things that's great about being able to create your own icons now uh, so easily. Um, I mean, Android I think has been able to do this for a while, but for those of us on iOS, this is a newer thing, <laughs> and it's so nice that you know we can we can really exercise a little more creativity and make make a device that we spend so much time with um, really make it our own. Super cool. That's something that um, I used to do from, I don't, remember, I don't remember how many years ago, but I've always been swapping sort of um, icons uh, from the, even on my folder. So if you see my mm. desktop, I actually have uh, all my folder looks like app. So I create images, PNGs with rounded corners and oh, I love it. Even like my Adobe Live, you know, folder as the Adobe Live logo. And I just, <laughs> I'm absolutely geek to that level that depending on the whatever work I'm doing, I have my icon, which is simply an image from the artwork or the stream or but I think that that was a fantastic topic that you went for. A fun character for contacts will be great. Yeah, contacts. That's oh, super yes. cool. Yeah, I think we we sometimes forget about the uh, about all of the standard apps and just how useful they can be. So they're perfect candidates for uh, for some icons. I love that idea. Completely agree because those are the very functional ones. So perhaps it even makes more sense. 
Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we can have the settings, the contacts, because they tend to be the most boring one as well. So definitely need a exactly to have a happy spin. All right. I'm just here want... in the chat to see Melanie had to go to a watercolor class. So hopefully we'll see her tomorrow. Bye, Melanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining Melanie. A watercolor class sounds fantastic. I'd like to do that. Steve is saying, Clary, have you seen the capacity in iOS 14 now to make your own icons completely differently? For iPhone and iPad, I've only seen YouTube videos about it, but uh, it's now built into the iOS 14. So Steve, that's exactly what Sarah is celebrating here. Sarah, if you want to share a little bit more for those of us that don't know much about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um... One of the things that we can now do in iOS 14 is introduce custom uh, widgets and icons um, to the home screen. And for years and years now, this has been very heavily controlled by uh, by Apple or just app developers who maybe supplied some uh, of their own icons. Uh, but if you spent any time on Pinterest or Twitter or Instagram uh, in the last week or so that iOS 14 has been out, you'll see a lot of people have been customizing their home screens. And so uh, I thought I would take this opportunity as someone who loves to customize anything I can get my hands on uh, to create some of my own icons. And, and yes, you're completely right. It's, um, it, it's very easy. Uh, anybody can do it. You could replace your icons with photos if you wanted. Um, there's a lot of room for creativity and, wow. and just exploration of, of different things. Um, so if you're interested at all, there's lots of articles uh, that will explain how to replace your icons, um, but it's a pretty simple process. Um, and yeah, you can uh, express yourself even, even more with your phone. And I think what, what is really cool is not only can you create these widgets and icons, but you could also create a wallpaper that would maybe support or create a really interesting background for oh, your- Oh, so it's uh, your environment. Those. It becomes like a completely personalized environment. Exactly, yeah. Super cool. And Leslie is asking, oh my God, wait, when did Illustrator release the iPad version? What's going on? Should, we tell, right. her? should we tell I, her the trick? I think I think we should. I think we should let her in. Let her into this one. Um, so yeah, so Illustrator on iPad is coming. We've all been dreaming about it for so long. I know I have. Um, I'm taking a national holiday on the release date, but it is coming. Um, the official release date for Illustrator on iPad will be October the 21st. And the great news is that if you want to be one of the first people to get your hands on it and start making incredible artwork, uh, you can pre-order it now. And uh, if you go to the app store, you can pre-order it. You'll get it uh, before, before everybody else does. Um, so it is coming. It is wonderful. I've been, I've been privileged to be a part of the beta uh, testing out and, and helping hunt down bugs uh, for Illustrator and iPad. And it has been wonderful um, seeing this come to life and, and just being really changing the way I think a lot of us will work now that we have much more freedom. So, so yes, it is here. That's super cool. That's and also uh, Voodoo Val has shared the link in the chat. So if you are on behance.net slash live, you'll be able just to click and go ahead and get your pre-order in order to have a before the general public. Super cool. That's looking so sweet. It's like a Marilyn Monroe camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I was thinking about maybe having a gap in between the teeth. But... Oh, I would love that. That's so cool. Just so between, uh, did Emmy Winehouse have the gap in the teeth? Let me check. Yeah, good question. What's the artist? I don't know why I thought about Emmy Winehouse, but I was like, is it between? Oh, because she also had the Marilyn Monroe piercing. I don't think she had the, the gap though. No, it doesn't look like. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's see, let's see. Quickly Googling things. Oh no, <laughs> she did, she did, oh. she did. Probably then it was fixed at some point because before it looks like 
it just kind of disappeared at some point. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so because uh, because it just kind of I I remember she had the, the piercing um, as the Madame Marilyn right. Monroe. So Jatimi is saying, love the color on this one. Very beautiful oranges. How do you okay. pick your palette, Sarah? Because I seen a lot of oranges or pink usually in your work. Time. Mm -hmm. so. I have a a standard color palette that I've been using for the last few months. And the way that uh, that I arrived at it was was really just uh, browsing uh, the color tool on Adobe. I think it's color.adobe.com and saving palettes. Um, I, I rarely create my own. I don't think I'm very good at creating interesting color palettes. And so I like to be inspired by other people. Um, and actually that's another thing I can share uh, about um, Illustrator on the iPad is that you do have access to the swatches and libraries that, that you're creating. So um, I have many, many libraries of, uh, of color swatches. And so for my stream specifically, I have some colors uh, picked out here that I can use. And those are all just saved from uh, colors.adobe. But I've done, I've gone through a lot. You can see here, these are all color schemes that I've saved that I thought were interesting. Oh, um, super cool. So how do you save a color scheme? Do you, do you save it on the iPad? Do you save it on the desktop? So that I've mainly been doing that on the desktop um, mm -hmm. because it's so much easier to browse uh, the colors uh, site with the desktop and also just spend a little bit more time curating it. So I've created a lot of different folders to organize colors. I, I try to be organized. Doesn't always work, but I try. Um, I know the feeling when you try. I have a I have a folder on my desk, desktop called Other, and yes. that's how I chuck everything in there, and I feel very organized afterwards. But then it's a mess. <laughs> it's oh, a I hidden it. mess. So in the chat they're saying Madonna, of course. That was Madonna. the gap. In the, yes. Oh my goodness! Okay. So right. Oh, that looks looking so cool. I think the attitude of the camera is also is very Madonna as well. Yeah, it's pretty bold. Super bold cool. camera. I lost my Twitter there. Copy. Chris Olson is asking, can you use gradients on the iPad? Fantastic question. Oh yes, wonderful question. So yes, you can. Um, let me let me show you. I'll just uh, jump into this layer. So within the color tool, you can choose gradients and you have uh, the three different basic gradients that you can choose from. Um, you edit them right on the shape, which is really nice. Um, so if I want to create additional stops, I can do that and change the colors uh, within the color wheel. Um, so that's your linear gradient. There are radial gradients. So if you want to uh, do some shading, normally my artwork is really flat. I've been experimenting a little more with uh, with gradients to add some shade, uh, but you can do that. And then there's, um, actually I don't know what this gradient is called, but there uh, you can basically create points. I think I've put maybe too A many. A freeform gradient. Freeform gradient, yeah. Yes. Um, so you create freeform gradients as well, uh, which I, I can't even imagine how I would use them. It's so, uh, you can create some really beautiful uh, designs with that. Um, but yeah, so you do have gradients. Um, and that's so just cool. as we saw, they're they're pretty easy to use. And you can add as many points as you want. Also, you can add color, opacity. I'm a huge fan of gradients. So mm. fantastic question, Chris. And yes, please keep those questions coming. We're here. Um, Sarah is here to guide you through the new uh, workspace on Illustrator on the iPad. Of course, this is still a beta. As we mentioned before, you can get your own pre-order for the launch, which is going to be at the first day of Max on October 21st. But again, feel free to ask questions on what is possible to do. Maybe you can also inspire the Adobe angels behind the app to create some amazing features. So let us know if you have any specific requests, even if it's not there. Be happy to take notes and pass it on. I'm sure they love it. Definitely. The team has been uh, really great to us throughout the beta, listening to our feedback, um, listening to us complain much earlier on when 
Uh, it was still very early in development, so it would crash from time to time. And they were so gracious <laughs> as we shared that feedback with them. Um, but it's been amazing uh, just to watch the evolution of the app. Um, I've, I've worked on app design, as I mentioned, throughout my career. And um, one of the things that I love is just getting to work with really passionate teams. And for a lot of the people on the Adobe uh, Illustrator on iPad team, they've been working on this for five or six years. And it's just been their everything that they live, eat, sleep and breathe. And you can really see that passion and that real love for this tool come through. Um, no feature requests, no idea was shot down. We were able to have really great conversations and uh, I'm really thankful for that. It's nice to know that the team behind it is really uh, passionate and inspired about what they're doing. Yes, I, I love when uh, there is this open interaction um, in order to, to grow together. I think that's how I always felt uh, working with the, with the Adobe teams is like very really embracing the future because that's the way that you really grow just pushing and creating that stuff that doesn't exist and you can always you can only find that through critiques and crashes otherwise exactly. you know and exactly. i have some questions so Great. yes keep those questions coming peter is asking is a pen used here or just fingers so i am using the apple pencil right now um you could use your fingers I don't think I am careful enough to be able to do that. So the pencil is is great for me. Um, but yes, you certainly could use uh, you could use the fingers. I just have the uh, finger touches turned on for gestures. Oh, and that's actually another thing that maybe I should mention too is that there's all sorts of touch and keyboard shortcuts. So there's a, a in the little help icon you can view all the gestures so that they're really easy to learn. Um, there's also this great, this was new to me, I think this is in Fresco too, um, but there's the touch tool. So there's this little circle right here, and this is a touch tool. And you'll see that when I tap on it, it's growing. And if I drag on it, this, the inside circle fills it. So that's another set of modifiers and tools. And so I think anyone who really wants to get the most out of the app, it would be really smart to invest time looking at these shortcuts and, and learning them. So one of them, uh, as an example, is when I'm creating a shape, uh, let's say like this rectangle, if I want to uh, scale it, I can scale it from whatever corner I'm dragging it from and constrain it by holding that touch shortcut. But I can also, if I touch and drag and hold down where I filled that, now I can uh, uh, constrain but, but scale from the center. So there's lots of really great thought that has gone into what, uh, what gestures you could make use of on the iPad that would make uh, your workflow even better. Um, so and I think that there is a... Um, a super cool one, since you're mentioning, is uh, with the type tool and a shape. So if you drag uh, the type in a shape uh, using the modifier, you can literally bring the type inside the shape and super easy. It's even easier than the desktop. So those are super oh. cool features. I got to try this. So you said create a shape. Yeah, and the type. And then I believe is one of the two modifier. If you literally drag the type in the shape, um, maybe a circle it just does a uh, the, the um, type on a path oh okay i don't have the ipad with me if um if you never used it before maybe tomorrow i can give a, a little bit more of information as well and you need so to you hold the mod yeah, oh and hold, the, hold the modifier yes i just bring it in i think it's the second one if not, uh, oh, yes, there we go. Here it is. There we go. Here it is. I was like sweating here. I was like, I hope I remember well. <laughs> That's yes. really neat. That's isn't that cool? That is fantastic. Oh, I learned something new. Yes, yeah, so That's literally awesome. you create typing a path in one second. Super, super seamless. And we have yeah. more questions coming. Is Great. there any effect function on the iPad? For example, drop shadows, etc. From Beck Nelson. Uh, so Beck. There are no there are no effects uh, tools yet. I would I would imagine and I hope, Illustrator team, if you're listening, that we will get some of those tools. Um, right now, if I need them, what I'll do is I will build this out um, on my iPad and then I'll move over to my desktop and apply the effects there. Um, but but hopefully one day soon we will get those uh, we'll get those features. 
and tomorrow tomorrow we're gonna perhaps show how to jump into the desktop as well so we yeah, can show how easy it is with the document cloud which is another fantastic release um maybe uh we can just show how to jump directly into the ipad and we can talk about it we'll see but that's that's the, the most important thing that you guys need to know, it's going to be seamless to start working on the iPad. Like Sarah was saying, she can work on her couch on the iPad, then turn around after she finished watching a movie and can, she can refine and work on the, um, on, the, on the desktop right away. And we have a question from Jotirmia. Does Sarah's, does Sarah's illustrations have some concept behind them? I certainly saw some conceptual one. Um, and how she comes up with those concepts that inspire her. Oh, Let that us is know. a wonderful question. Um, <laughs> Jotirma, I, the, I, I would love to say that there was deep concept behind <laughs> my characters, but really um, what I love, what I am most driven by in my work, and, and hopefully this comes across in, uh, if, you, if you take a look at my Behance or uh, on my Instagram, uh, uh, or on my website, I just love, I love characters. I am inspired most by, uh, by cartoons and uh, just how expressive a character can be. Um, I love color and I like complex compositions. So if I can combine all of those into interesting uh, pieces, then that's, that's the thing that, that really drives me. Um, last year, when I did that Pictoplasma uh, festival piece, uh, that Claudia was mentioning earlier, that actually did have concept behind it. I was exploring um, archaeo, what is it called? Archaeo astronomy, um, which oh, are wow. these like alternate, alternate history theories about aliens visiting the earth very early on in history and giving us technology. Um, I think there's a TV show about this. I think it's called Ancient Aliens. I haven't seen it, but I was creating artwork that was based on that. And, uh, and so that was a big influence because those stories are really amazing. Um, I love thinking about like, oh, what would it be like if, if aliens had That's visited and cool. given us technology? So stories will inspire me in those ways, but most of the time I'm just looking to create really interesting forms uh, with characters. So we have, um... Let's see another question from Seneda. And by the way, I love the. I would love to think that if there were aliens or there are aliens with technology, they look like your character. I think that would be so cool. There, are, I love when you combine patterns with stripe and and your solid colors, and mm. that's super, super, super amazing. Sena is asking, um, are there brushes presets or the ability to add one or custom presets. ones? Sorry. So, so that's a very good question. There are not, um, as far as I know. Um, I primarily work with the pen tool and with um, uh, and with shapes. Uh, however, you can move between uh, Fresco and Illustrator. So if you created something in Illustrator, uh, you can open that file uh, easily in Fresco, and you could use your custom brushes there. Uh, I, I do believe that that has been a feature that has been requested that we'd be able to use uh, more brushes and build custom ones. But I think uh, for now, uh, you're, you're limited to uh, your pencil tool, which I'm using right now. Um, and then there is the blob, blob brush. Oh, and the use? blob brush. Yeah. Which I sadly uh, do not have a lot of experience with. Um, <laughs> but the blob brush, you could imagine that that can, can grow out in time and uh and would support more um absolutely i think that that was one of the biggest requests from the other amazing um people that they were in the in the make it um i remember someone from my team was asking a little bit more question and i know that there's a lot of development right before max so i definitely expect that in this month we're gonna we're gonna see some more development for for the brushes. So amazing question, and we have fifty seconds. So if you have like literally Ooh. one minute, everyone, if you want to ask another questions before we jump into the artist spotlight, and if you want to uh, be featured into the artist spotlight, don't forget that the very top of the chat on behance.net slash live, you'll be able to click on the artist spotlight tab in order to have your artwork and portfolio featured. And again, it's not much of a review here. We're just li literally here to give you a shout out because I share my work, Sarah share work, every guest um, 
that is here on Adobe Live has the pleasure to share the work. But of course, we also look at your work because I personally click on a lot of profile in order to discover artwork. So make sure that you always uh, share your work on Behance and at least have some of your most representative pieces because we love to showcase to the world what you do. And I can see Peter is us saying, thank you, ladies. Peter, I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. Jatir is saying, that's so cool. I've watched Ancient Ladies and also uh, like the type warm illustration on Sarah Instagram. Nice. Super cool. Fantastic. So I think it's time to jump into my desktop. Let me clean up everything that I'm here. I had your iPad very big because I, oh, then we're going to jump back. Let's see. Let, let's, let's feature our artist first and then Sarah we're going to jump back into your um, iPad. So today artist in the spotlight is our lovely Aubrey Feet. So I remember Aubrey in the chat. I don't I haven't seen her today on Behance but we are here to have a look at her work and her portfolio and make sure to give her um, a follow. Um, Aubrey is usually in the chat she, su she submitted her portfolio again if you want to have your portfolio and your behance profile um shared with the world make sure that you submit it for the artist spotlight everyone is saying thank you sarah i guess that they really worked working with you um oh. and find it very informative and engaging so we have sarah mona That's adriana great. peter and paloma so Let's have a look though. Let's dedicate it. This time is for Aubrey. Let's talk a little bit about her, her work. Great. Sarah, I'm just going to introduce uh, Aubrey because of course I've done a little bit of stalking um, research. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can already see right away from a portfolio that as we were saying before, um, the beauty of art and the beauty of it working with the Adobe apps is that you can express your voice and express your passions. So the first thing that we see, it's a map water bottle with a lot of brand like Patagonia or uh, National Forest, Climb on. So when I went and I read into her description about her, we can right away learn that she's of course an outdoor uh, lover. So she specializes in digital illustration, painting and photography, but it's um, when she's not producing art or watching Netflix, she'll be hiking, fishing or lounging on the hammock and she loved that wildlife and i think that that's something that is very clear and you can get in one a glimpse of a high when you look at her profile there is anything that you want to start from sarah any artwork that catches your eyes that you want to um have a look that we can showcase with the world definitely i would love to jump in i i again i'm very character and person driven i'd love to jump in and take a look a little closer look at the two people yes yes I'm here. Oh, there are more than two people. Oh, wow. So we have illustrated portrait using iPad plus Apple Pencil. So I would have loved for Aubrey to be here and let us know which app she used, but probably we can scroll down and see if she gave us any indication. Um, and Apple iPad and Apple Pencil, Procreate and Illustration. So cool. we have a, a lot of different um style of illustration here sarah well, let, let, us, yeah. let us know your feedback the eyes are uh somewhat of similar in terms of uh eyeline and a lot of female characters yeah so Besides again i love i love a good eye these uh -huh. are um, these are fantastic eyes um i love just, the doggy look how pretty it looks so happy yeah. So yeah, we can the, see that the dog is super happy. Yeah, I love the dog. The and and I I also was really drawn to the uh, the style of the guitar and the amount of detail that's in the guitar. Uh, the person playing the guitar uh, is incredible. And the um, textures as well. So we have a texture in the top. It's almost like a velvet that the 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 reflection that a velvet t-shirt gives off and is matched with the yes. hat band as well super cool yeah, and we that. have textures on the guitar we have textures on the background so nice i i love the details as well and don't you think it's super cool to have the simplicity of the shapes of the body features yeah i think it's and then the objects are very curated yeah i love it, it especially you know if you look at the image 
um, just on that Behance page, that original portrait, you don't necessarily see that texture, but as soon as you open them up, um, it just really draws you in. There's so much uh, that goes into uh, each well, of these pieces. Grain, grain it's, as well. And I, and anyone who's who's great at applying textures, I, I just, uh, I give them all the props because that's something that I've always struggled with. And so when someone does it well, I'm always just in awe of that work. And this is a great example. Um, the other one that I really loved, again, it was one that I clicked on. And then once I saw it bigger, I was like, oh my goodness is the, uh, there's a woman with glasses. Oh, yes. Uh, with short that, blonde the, hair. Purple one, shirt yes. with the ring, yes. Yeah. Love that. So when I opened that, I saw all the texture on her eyeglasses. Um, and then I noticed, oh my goodness, she has all of this great jewelry on. It's uh, it, absolutely gorgeous. I, I almost want to see actual photos of these people. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. Just to have like an idea of uh, how, how the translation goes there. And even if you look at the um, blonde lady next to it, the one with longer hair yes. and a black shirt, the, uh, the, the, the glasses, it looks like it's done with a crayon. So even there, even in, in a fine line uh, frame for a pair of glasses, we have some texture in there as well. Super cool. Absolutely beautiful. And, and I think something that, uh, uh, that Aubrey does a really good job with is hair. Hair is so hard to draw. Um, it's why I only create weird characters because I don't have to worry about <laughs> hair so much with most of the things that I do. But yeah, on screen right now, the, the blonde woman with the big smile with her eyes closed. With the red um, sweater, yeah. Yeah, the, the red sweater. Uh, it's the... I, there's just so much personality and and it, it comes through not just in the facial expression but like the movement that I see in the hair it's uh it's just really well done um, and also the body is almost like as if she's leaning forward like yes yeah towards him so so cool and Fantastic. I can see a lot of uh smiles so I think that again I'm, I'm really tied into what we were saying before personality your voice your hobby comes true we can see a lot of freedom in this illustration, a lot of happiness, a lot of like, you know, smiles, all the kids are smiling and, you know, the ladies above and even the music, the lady plays music is so intense and like she's, she's feeling the music, she's in there, so yes. beautiful. I love that Audrey has been able to translate um, this, this emotion and this feeling of you know, she's in she's in the guitar. She's outside the guitar, but in her mind, she's inside the sound, which is beautiful. Yeah, that's so well put. I, I completely agree. And we got a little curl coming out, the little detail. Yeah, it's, it's those things, like those little details, which I'm sure if you actually met these people, these are probably like really important, like physical traits of, of each person. And I, I just love the amount of detail that's here. Um, it really, it really draws you in. Like there's always something new to see uh, in, in each of these portraits. Before we switch project, I just want to go back into the uh, chat to see if there is any question. I know that the amazing Budubao is there taking care of everyone, answering questions for us. Um, but let's see, everyone is loving the glasses. Yeah, those glasses were super cool, almost like a terrazzo frame. And yeah. Carl's saying, I'm new to drawing an illustrator. And that's the right place to be because we are here to share with you some amazing techniques. And everyone is new on Illustrator on the iPad. So you're absolutely in the perfect place <laughs> <laughs> to be new. Um, and also, yes, Paloma is saying exactly, you're in the right place. Fantastic. And um, we have uh, Budaval is answering on how to submit the artist spotlight and of course yes if uh, you feature if you submit illustration they will be reviewed doing an illustration uh, spotlight with uh, an illustrator guest and of course depending on the topic of the stream um, your work will follow into a pot of possible features that will be then um, shared with everyone during the artist spotlight today we're talking about illustration and therefore uh, Aubrey portfolio looked amazing. So make sure that you go ahead on the artist spotlight tab and share your uh, Behance profile if you want to, to have a shout out during Adobe Live and you're doing the artist spotlight. And let's change project because we have much more different things. I'm going to go with the typography. Great. 
and then maybe we can change on another one. We have we have photography as well. So I love oh, the wow. diversity in the expression here. So we have a reiteration of um, of of a wild child based on Guthrie Brown song. Are you familiar oh, with it? I'm not. I'm very, not. I'm not but, either. Definitely but now I want to check it out. I'll have to listen after. So the it looks like there is a bit of magic on it. Which is your favorite, sir? Oh, oh, it's tough. I I really like the green, I think, the best. Um, Probably need to change the yellow into orange so it fits into your color palette. <laughs> that's true. I would have to I would have to change it a little bit, but I do the other thing that I love in this is just the uh, the duplication of the of the lettering, so the outline on top with mm -hmm. uh, with it with a solid fill behind. Um, it just, it, it could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. That could be a shadow. Um, but I, I love the, um, I love the detail that that, that, that creates um, while keeping it simple and legible. Like it's just very interesting. Um, I love the detail also in the, in the, in the choosing different colors for the sparkles outside. Yeah. So we have a little monotone palette there as well. And it, and it also changes depending on the background. Mm -hmm. So see the 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 red and, and pink one has also a different component, or maybe it's the same color that looks different. Yeah, it might be the background is affecting. Oh, is affecting I get tricked a lot. I'm not I'm not that color clever. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's I mean that's one thing I definitely appreciate about this is you know regardless of which one you're drawn to, all three of these work really well. And um, if I was to see anyone individually, uh, they would be great. If given the choice, I, I again, I think I lean towards the green. Um, it just looks very fresh. And mm -hmm. I don't know, there's something very welcoming about it. Uh, but all three of them, I think, are, are beautiful. Very, clearly, very good command of color uh, that Aubrey has. So do you want to pick another one? Sure. Let's take a look at... Oh, I kind of I want to look at everything. Let's <laughs> take a look at the map. Okay, let's I'm jump into the map. the map. Oh, that's a lot going on here, and Bryce Canyon National Park, um, National Park Road Trip Series. Okay, so oh, wow. again, reflecting her love for hiking. We read in our bio that she loves spending her time off drawing into um, hiking and fishing and outdoor activities. Again, she uh, has been able to draw on the iPad and um, reflecting her passion. I love this font. I, I want to know if it's, maybe she edited it. Look at the B, how cool it yeah, is. Yeah, the type is beautiful. I really like that. And there is also a texture at the edge. Lot of details. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, zooming I'm in like <laughs> completely. I don't never know if I'm sorry, guys. I zoom in work a lot. I love to see <laughs> details. No, and I think it's great. With the iPad, you can you can. Uh, that's one of the beauty of working with the iPad and um, and the pencil. You can really give fine details. You can zoom in with your finger and really use the pencil um, to work your edges and to create some super amazing illustration. Oh, and again, yeah. the color here is beautiful. Yes, I mean she's she's got a real talent for color. Um, the again, both of these, the the blue with the white and the green for Yellowstone is great, but. Um, I love the colors for Bryce Canyon. Um, not colors I would ever choose because, like I said, I'm, it's not something I'm great at. But when I see these color combinations, I'm, I'm definitely drawn to them. I also just love, and I, I would I'd be really interested in hearing more about the process that mm -hmm. that Aubrey used for creating the maps, um, because she's got not only the area map, but she's also highlighted specific trails in each of those parks and. Like clearly, you, I mean, as you said, this is something that she loves and it really comes through, I think, in this um, because these uh, are just a beautiful trail map. And imagine how easy it's going to be now with Illustrator on the iPad. You can just literally draw on top of maps and create your own style. And instead of having to do little dots with a mouse, or even if you have a tablet, I think the drawing on a surface uh, I was going to invest in spending money into trying to find the right touch screen, pad, pen, whatever. And now I'm just like, okay, just going to wait. I'm just going to invest on the iPad and uh, really practice in that. But I, I mean, I think that doing maps, that's that's something that really inspired me to do. 
Have you nice. ever done right. a map works on the iPad? I haven't. I would love to. Um, I, you can I do think... like a character map or something. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. See, so, now you're inspiring me. This is great. Ca carrying on, carrying on the, the, the theme of the, uh, what was it? Uh, aliens is uh, archaeo yeah the ancient ancient aliens yes so maybe we can like have different population in different location and even some symbols for the tribes i don't know oh my goodness Sorry. uh i i, I, I sense <laughs> i sense a collaboration now i like yes, it yes i can talk about this sort of stuff for days <laughs> so, excellent let's go back to abrut's work and she's done some um some stickers as well oh that's awesome Super cool. Is that like a, do you think that that's a photo or an illustration as well? That's a great question. I, I want to say it's an illustration, but I could be wrong. Aubrey, Aubrey, let us know. We wanted to know from her and I'm going to jump into the bottle right now. Cause oh, yeah. I love that. Look at this logo. She's done a fantastic job. And again, even the brands that she uh, reflects on are completely I mean, I, lo I love to think that that's our bottles, you know, that that's our bottle looks like with all the stickers yeah. on it. I mean, at the perspective, like she's worked really well with wrapping those stickers around the bottles. Um, mm -hmm. The perspective is it's fantastic. And these are very recognizable stickers too. I, oh, yes. I feel like I've actually seen these on people's water bottles before. Uh, the All the National Forest uh, stickers, the Patagonia one is, is definitely very iconic. Um, but We've again, another one. fish as well. Yeah. So on the left, if oh, our friend right. Gus was watching here, he probably would have know because I know that his hobby is in fishing as well. Nice. Um, and Peter Stevenson in the chat is telling us that it looks like probably when we were reviewing the font before, it looks mm. like Umbra medium font. I love someone who's got a high for fonts like that. So yeah, let's, thank let's you, Peter. A, and we have Jacob in the chat saying that he loves he loved Bryce Canyon as well. Um, can you guys let me know where Bryce Canyon? Because from in Italy and Manchester, it definitely is not located in there <laughs> because I never heard of it. Sarah, do you know where he's? Uh, I I don't. And yes, if if Jacob can tell us, I think I would love to know where it is. I, I have not been to Bryce Canyon. Let um, us know. And also, we have a Louise sticker. Oh, Louise is the smile Louise. one. Louise. Yes. <laughs> I so love cute. Louise. <laughs> That's super sweet. I love this bottle. I think the pink background is my favorite because I love mm -hmm. the contrast. Um, but I mean, I think she's done a fantastic job. So make sure that you go ahead and give a follow to Aubrey on Behance. Her portfolio uh, is behance.net slash Aubrey Feet. And she also has um, or a social link here um, at the bottom. So you can access her Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn and Society6 um, links directly from the uh, from from the Behance portfolio. And let's see if we have uh, perhaps 10 minutes. Let's let's. Oh, Jacob is saying is in Utah. Oh, Utah. OK, <laughs> it's just an American thing. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Yes. Utah. <laughs> A lot of American things in, in, in this work. Um, but and Bryce Canyon, I'm going to have to look up uh, Bryce Canyon because that looks like a, just looking at those maps, it looks some great trails to check out there. And I was Oh, what are we at looking the, at now? Yes. So uh, sorry. I just, I just was curious and I started clicking. <laughs> oh no, it's great. So, I went on the climb bond one just to see if it was maybe another trail. And it looks like maybe, maybe that's her. I haven't done my stalking that refined. <laughs> I haven't, re I need to refine my stalking here, but I love the hand feeling of the, you know, the eggs almost feel like you're going for um, a treasure hunting. Yes, yes. So a guide to a, outdoor climbing, where to go plus how to stay safe. And also, again, look how beautiful it is. We have a, this little GIF animation, but again, texture on the edges, super cool. Love it. I could imagine this being a sticker, uh, like an Instagram sticker. Yes, that's yes, absolutely. We need to go and check her out on Instagram as well. So make sure to give Aubrey a follow in order to get inspired by her work. And let's see, do we have reviewed the majority of the work? Leave it better. I think that's more typography here. I would love to hear her process in terms of what she does um, with 
you know, if you, maybe that's the type on a path, it's just that yeah. maybe line. And then imagine the possibilities now with Adobe on the iPad. Uh, oh, with sure. this new feature, if you can just draw a crazy line with your uh, pencil and then just simply drag the type in there with a modifier, um, little uh, tap, tap icon, option. I don't know you. What is the better way of saying a modifier? Yeah, the modifier uh, key. Key. There we go. Fantastic. Loving all this color option. And I love the fact that you have a repetition, but the contrast of the stroke and the feel. Um, really makes it nice and, and you know, come in nice to the eye as well. Oh, completely agreed. I really, I also really love this font. Um, maybe someone in the chat, maybe Peter knows this since Peter yes, got the last Peter, one. Yes, Peter, let us know. <laughs> uh, don't let us down, Peter. Uh, <laughs> now, before, I know we just got a few minutes left um, and I want to make sure that everyone sees Sarah's profile as well, because we've been talking about, um, whoops, that's the stream. So that's a little bit of a meta stream. <laughs> I've seen us twice, but uh, that's Sarah Behan's portfolio. So she said that also today, Sarah, in how long you're going to be streaming again here? Um, so I'll be back tonight at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, so 5.30 uh, Pacific. Um, and I'll be, I'm usually on that exact same time, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I'll be continuing on with a new project I've started, which is creating uh, my, my interpretation of, uh, of album covers. So I've been getting suggestions from friends of some of their favorite album covers, and I'll be working on those again tonight, yeah. also on the iPad. That's oh fantastic. Um, and if Jacob, we can go back please onto my screen real quick. I don't know if we have enough time. Um, how many minutes we're left? I know we probably have just a couple of minutes uh, left, but I wanted to show the piece of Sarah's that I've witnessed live in the installation and Pictoplasma. And that's why I knew right away that you were going to be excited about the uh, radial tool because I've seen, uh, and this is um, the conceptual um, piece that that we were talking about with the aliens, the different mm -hmm. uh, archaic technologies. Uh, fantastic. And again, we have Sarah on Instagram and um, Twitter with uh, her handle, you are super duper. So make sure to give it a follow. And um, before we look at the uh, last thing, probably we're gonna look at is your uh, Facebook icon. I wanna re remember with everyone to go ahead on iamclady.com and make sure to submit your design for the rework it stream that is coming up next week with asus you'll be able to use this little form in order to share your work with us and we'll be able to use it during the stream but if we have another minute let's jump and reveal the facebook icon uh which is the final of this set let's see if we can see sarah's before saying our goodbyes how many minutes we have we have left i'm always i always try my best not to get cut off we have two minutes left. Fantastic. So Sarah, maybe you can talk us through this last app and then we can see what sure. we've done today. Definitely. So I thought for this last one, and we can maybe continue this one, finish it up um, on tomorrow's stream, but I thought it would be fun to take the F from the Facebook logo and turn that into a full-bodied character. And so I've thrown a head onto the top of that F. We'll use the, I don't know my typography terms, but we'll use the bar <laughs> in the F. Uh, to, to be arms, so I'll add some uh, of my really simple little hands onto the edges. Uh, and then maybe do, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the legs will be just yet, but might do something a little weird with the legs. Uh, I still so want to cool. put a nose in here, maybe some teeth um, or a tongue or something in this character, but I think there's more we can do with this tomorrow. Um, so I'll zoom it back out. Actually, let's go to the, let's go to our phone screen here. Yes. So here's so our... Sarah Finish yeah, let, icons from today. So, so tell us what inspired inspired you to to do the icons. Yeah, so I'm definitely excited about home screen customization, and I wanted to bring my characters to some app icons. I'd eventually like to have a whole suite of these. So, if you have ideas for icons, I want to hear them. Tell me your favorite apps, and I'd love to create icons for them. Um, again, I'll make them all available um, uh, through Behance, so you can grab the asset if you want to edit them and make them your own. You're very, very welcome to. Um, but uh, yeah, loose interpretations of apps, putting eyes on them, basically anthropomorphizing these app icons. Oh, putting... that's an hard word. I'm not going to even try to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> 
fantastic. It looks, um, uh, Budaval say it looks super duper. Oh, <laughs> I absolutely, thank you, Budaval. Absolutely agree. And uh, don't forget, everyone, that you'll be able to download uh, a pre, not preview, I'll be able to uh, apply for um, Sarah. Help me here. It looks like it's too late in the UK for me to, to think straight, <laughs> but they'll be able to, to get an a illustrator on the iPad, register in order to have a pre-order. That was the word. Pre-order, yes. <laughs> you can, you can pre-order it now on the App Store and it will be available on October the 21st. If you pre-order it, you will get it before everyone else, uh, which is super awesome. You can start creating way faster than uh, than anyone else who doesn't have this news. So definitely grab that pre-order. Um, that's just a couple of weeks away. It's so exciting. Um, and uh, and soon we'll all be creating and sharing Illustrator yes, on the iPad. Yes, but we're definitely going to do that tomorrow. So don't forget to check Sarah's, um, Sarah Behance and uh, make, make some notes for tomorrow so we can create more icons together here with Sarah on uh, tomorrow's stream with Carter Design. I'll leave you with, uh, I believe, uh, another stream, the XD Daily Creative Challenge coming. Ooh, excellent. And we'll see each other tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everybody. This has been great fun. Thank you, Sarah. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Claudia. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.